Okay. from jumping from the camera to here. Not a good sign. All right, guys, and welcome back to episode number two of Making the Low Poly Racer. I'm super excited that the other video did so well. I was really surprised that it did, uh, had a lot of views, a lot of visitors, a lot of uh, new subscribers as well. So welcome to you guys. I'll still spend a little bit more time in Blender in this episode. I've got to model some of the rocks and trees and some fences and road barricades like uh, tire stacks and things like that. I'll slow down a few parts because uh, it contains a few uh, maybe tri tips and tricks that I haven't mentioned before. So uh, have a look at those, but then we'll start exporting the objects and bring them into Unity. So I'm also really happy to hear that so many people enjoy uh, looking forward to, to the Unity stuff because uh, that's where I feel most at home. Uh, I do Blender, but also do Unity. And I'd love to show you guys how we put this game together. So I've had a lot of requests. Uh, will you show the wheel physics? Will you show how to do the power slides and how to do uh, the colliders and yeah, you name it. So I'm going to try to cover as much as I can in this series. I'll jump back into Blender for a bit and then we'll move on to exporting these things and bring them into Unity. And episode three will be pretty much all Unity. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit a like if you'd liked it and uh, let's, let's get a move on. Let's make this racing game happen again. So get ahead. First of all, we're going to create some stones. They're going to be used as decorations and obstacles. So you can see here the car hits them. Maybe they're a little bit too light, but it's easy enough to increase the mass of the rigid body in Unity. In Blender, I do Shift A and I create a new mesh. Uh, it's going to be a cube this time. And I use uh, I, I create these models in the same scene as I did before. And uh, it's uh, just find it a little bit easier to get the scale correct. And I've already got the material set. And don't be afraid that there's a lot of uh, objects in your scene. Just hide a lot of them. Uh, I pressed Control 2 to subdivide the mesh into two levels to create this stone. And then I just uh, select a few vertices and I switch into uh, proportional editing. You can hit O on your keyboard and that will enable proportional editing so you can just start moving some objects. Use this uh, mouse wheel to scroll it down or up <laughs> regardless of what you need or depending on what you need. And then you can just shape the stone a little bit to, to get a shape that you prefer. It's not too picky about it, I just played around with it a little bit to get some... I like to have a flat bottom so they can rest uh, nicely on the ground as well. Just uh, repeat this by moving some vertices uh, around until you're happy with uh, a stone shape. Then you can hit A to select all the vertices and then press Shift D to duplicate the mesh. And uh, I'm still in the same object, I've just uh, detached those... Uh, or I haven't detached them, I've, I've duplicated those vertices and then I can create a new stone and just change the shape a little bit. I often work inside the same object. I think it's easier to just duplicate the mesh inside of an object instead of necessarily duplicating the objects, but it's up to whatever you prefer. Okay, this is going to be a bit boring to watch, so I'll fast forward this a little bit, but I, I do a bunch of stones, I uh, think five in total, and just shape them a little different and have some different sizes. You can always rescale them inside of Unity later on as well. But I made uh, two, of, two of the last blocks I made a little bit larger and pointier. You could use those as bigger obstacles if you want. All right, you can add a bevel modifier and uh, that shapes the edges of the rocks a little bit, as you can see. Uh, I like to maybe it gives it a little bit more of a cartoony look and you can play around a little bit with the angle settings to get uh, the look and feel that you want. Again, I think it breaks up the little uh, uh, plainness of the, of the mesh so you can do it if you want. And then you apply the modifier and that will bake the changes into the mesh. And then what I do is I add a subdivide mo modifier, a subdivision modifier, and that adds a lot more detail, but I'm not gonna keep them like that. So I add a decimate modifier, which is a bit contra <laughs> contradictive. And then I slide it down and that's, that actually reduces the, uh, <laughs> the, the number of uh, faces again. You wonder why I'm doing that, but that's because uh, I like to get them uh, a bit uh, irregular. Now we're gonna create some tires, some tire barriers. They'll be used individually and in stacks of tires. 
So again, I'm in the same scene and I'm gonna use the car wheel. So if you haven't seen the when I model the cars, check out that video. But then I just hit L to select the linked vertices on the wheel itself. And then I do Shift D to duplicate the selection again into a separate mesh. You could create this uh, tire all the way from scratch again, but since I had it, I wanted to keep, keep the consistent look. So I decided to duplicate it. I applied the mirror modifier uh, so I didn't have that uh, messing around. I could have probably just uh, deleted the mirror modifier <laughs> instead because I don't. I only need one wheel, but I decided uh, apparently to do that. Just uh, remove the interior rim geometry and keep the tire. You select whichever uh, vertices you want to delete and then you just uh, delete them, the faces in this case. And then I ended up with a bit of a weird looking tire. So I had to shape it or, and fix it a little bit. And I selected the face on the back that was solid. I deleted that one, clicked Alt left mouse to ring select uh, that edge. And then I slid it in uh, and I hold the control key and do uh, a snapping. So I get it to the exact same location as the vertex or the, the inner rim. I do F3 to bridge the edge loops and then uh, that bridges the faces. And now I've got a tire. I apply the mirror modifier. Apparently I didn't do that one before. And then I just delete, I think uh, this one. Then I click A and I select uh, all the vertices and then I shift S and do cursor to selected. The reason for this is I want to set the origin. So press F3 and type set origin and then set it to the 3D cursor. Uh, you have to do that in object mode. So tab out of edit mode and do that again. So again, uh, F3 set origin and then I'd set it to the center of the mass for all the stones here as well origin to center of mass volume. If you select that one, it'll uh, center the object volume onto there. So I do this for all the stones. We want to make sure that all the objects have a nice center position. Then for the wheel, I rotate it. So I hit R on the keyboard and I rotate it by typing Y90 and that'll flip it nicely 90 degrees. I move it down to the ground just so I can see what it looks like. I'm going to create a stack of tires as well. They're used as decorations and obstacles. You can see the car hits them and they're heavier in mass so they don't uh, fly around as quickly as a tire and they'll save some performance as well by being a single big mesh. Press Shift E in Blender to duplicate the tire object that I did before and hit Tab to go into edit mode. And then I do Shift D a bunch of time to duplicate the selected vertices. I just do this over and over again, Shift D, and then I position it, reposition the tire. This is no... Uh, particular order that I have to do this. I just went off uh, just random, basically duplicating these uh, tires. Then I moved them up a little bit to try to create some some sort of a stack of tires or a stash. <laughs> mustache, not a mustache, a stash of tires. I rotate them a little bit as well to keep a bit of an inconsistent look. So it looks like they've just been uh, thrown a bunch of tires onto there. So I'll fast forward this part because it's basically just a bunch of shift Ds and R to rotate them and then I try to place them so it looks decent. It's not too picky to be honest. Just do it whatever way you feel. And then I wanted to add some straps to hold this into place. It'll look a bit weird if you hit that and the tires didn't go flying all over the place. So I hit Shift A and added a new mesh and I added a plane this time. Press 1 on the keyboard to enter vertex mode and then I can move the vertices into place. Make sure you have vertex snapping on because uh, then it makes it easier to hold the control key and you can snap that to the vertices of the other object, which is the tire object in this case. I just hold the control key and I move uh, the vertices so it snaps to pretty good places onto the other tires. Go into edge mode and then select the edge and hit E to extrude that one. And then you just repeat the process of moving the vertices with the control key and then you extrude again. And you keep doing that until you wrap your new mesh around the tires so you get something that looks a bit like a strap around it and that fits a little bit snug around it. I'll just fast forward this again. I do Alt E as well to extrude the faces along the normals so I get a bit of volume to the strap so they don't cut through. That'll expand the strap out. And then I fast forward a little bit again because I added a vertical strap. I thought that would look a little bit better as well to keep them in place. Now we're going to create a fence and as you can see it doesn't break on light impacts like the red car or the little race car did. Uh, but when the police car comes and does a 90 <laughs> then it, it'll uh, snap the... It doesn't have to be the police car <laughs> but then the fences break anyway. So what I ended up doing was I created a simple fence and you have to make sure that the, the, the geometry sticks down a little bit underground. 
And then I made it two meters long, so it'll be nice to snap it, or nice and easy to snap it in place in Unity, because if you hold the control key in Unity, you can also snap in there. This is how I made it. Basically, I just had a starter from a cube and then I extruded it. I made a bunch of loop cuts and uh, I inset a few of the faces and then I uh, extruded the inset, hold the control key to snap it into place. I actually adjusted it to make sure that it was exactly two meters. The reason why I created a separate fence post as well is because when you duplicate objects in Unity in particular, you shouldn't have a, a lot of additional geometry. So if you had two fence posts on all, it'd be duplicating all the fence posts. So what I ended up doing here is I just created a separate post so I can do the endings quite nice. Now we're going to create a police station and it's only going to be used for decoration, but that's for now. I'm probably going to use uh, use it so the police car will uh, come out of it later on as well and chase you. I don't know why it would be a police car <laughs> by a racetrack. But maybe he's here eating donuts, having a good time and then race cars go past. He's got to have someone to chase. I'll just fast forward this. This uses all the normal techniques that I use in my 10 minute modeling challenges and also in my tutorials. It's my, if you want to check out the 20 tips for Blender low poly modeling, for example, check out the link in the description below and uh, you can see the techniques. It's a lot of E to extrude, S to scale, if you know me by now. <laughs> and um, also inset, a very common thing that I use and control R for a bunch of loop cuts. And also use the UV coloring technique that I've used for the cars to give the police station some color. Now we're gonna create some trees and I start from a primitive cube again and I colorize it brown and then it's a, again a matter of extruding it and hitting R to rotate it. When you hit R you can press the axis that you want to rotate around so the Z axis for example then it'll force a rotation around the Z axis. I'll fast forward this it uses the exact same techniques as I always do when I model so it's probably gonna bore you if I do this in real time. In another game that I made before that I never finished but uh, you can animate these trees quite nicely so I'll probably add that later on in a shader as well so that that would be shader driven inside of unity and you can actually have the graphics card animate the trees without uh, any performance impact whatsoever it's really good so i'll be able to show that i've got a video in my history if you can be bothered to look back long enough in my history you can see that already but i'll probably make a new one for that I use a lot of uh, proportional editing when i model trees and stones and things like that so that's o on the keyboard and it, make use of that it's really handy to uh, to shift the shape of the tree Right, then I separate the trees and make them into individual objects. I just select all the vertices and I hit P to separate the selection into an object. I always like to export uh, them as separate objects. By the time they end up inside of Unity, it's nice to have them uh, separated and set to the center of the scene. Don't be afraid if the scene looks a bit messy, you have got loads of geometry and trees, you can always hide them. Select the objects, select the geometry and press H to hide it. To set the tree origin as well to the pivot point, it's really important that it's at the base of the tree, but do have some geometry that sticks down underground as well, just a little tiny bit. It makes it super easy to place them inside of Unity because when you drag the trees out into the scene, they'll automatically use the pivot point or the center point of the tree uh, to place itself if you place it as a prefab. It's really good inside of Unity to, uh, to have it like that. Then make sure you name the objects properly as well. The name that you give them in here in Blender is what they'll end up having inside of Unity when you import them, the mesh name will be. So try to keep a good naming standard there. You can move the objects, as I mentioned, into Origo or 000. 
If you select an object and hit Alt G, that does that automatically for you. It resets the transform and it's a really quick way to move objects from wherever they are in the Blender scene to the center of the scene, which is really nice when you export them, as I mentioned. It's nice to have them in 000. XYZ. I had some problems with the cars, so I had to fix them. I had some inverted faces, so if you've downloaded those, you'll probably notice that if you have back face culling uh, disenabled. And I had to fix that for the game because Unity doesn't render the back faces of objects unless you tell it to, and I don't really like to have the, the, some of the faces inverted. So I have to fix that by, and I enable all the cars in the scene because you can do that for all of them at the same time. And then I select all the car objects in the scene, and then I press tab to go into edit mode for all of them at the same time. And now I can hit L on the keyboard to select the link faces. And it was a bit tedious here because I had to hover the mouse over each element that was inverted. So all the door handles, all the rear view mirrors, all the windscreen, not the windscreen, but the bumpers and things. So I had to do that for all the cars and hit L and select all of them. And when you've done that, hit F3 on the keyboard and type in flip normals. And when you apply that one, it'll flip all the faces so the back faces are no longer facing outwards. They'll be facing inwards like they should be. So now the cars are fixed. I should mention that the pickup had some problems with the wheel arches, but it was quite a, a long fix, so I had to cut that out for this video. Then it's time to detach the wheels. They have to be separate objects when you're bringing it into Unity because the car chassis is gonna be one thing and then the wheels have to be separate. So I basically zoom into one of the cars and then I hit L again when I hover over the wheel and I select the linked vertices. And then I hit Shift D to detach the selection into a separate object. I rename it to wheel because that's the name it'll have in Unity later on. And then I take away the mirror modifier. We only need one wheel. And I wanted to tidy up the geometry because I wanted to be able to see through the wheel. So uh, in the quick build, I only kept a full face inside. So I do some uh, editing here by uh, insetting the inner, inner side and extruding it inwards using the normal techniques that I always do for my editing. So there's no probably no different things here really to compare to what I normally do. Right, you can hit F to create a face. So when you've selected a bunch of edges, then if you hit the F key, it'll uh, fill that gap and create a face for you. Right, if you hit Alt and left mouse, it'll ring select a bunch of edges. And then I hit F again to fill that edge as well, or fill that gap. All right, I'll just fast forward. Again, it's the same type of editing, so you're probably fed up with that now. But I colorized it so it looked a bit like a rim inside, and then I just uh, made sure it connected on both ends. Hold the control key to snap those vertices into place and, and merge them together. That's it, the wheel's done. And uh, now I had to delete the wheel. So uh, for all the cars, they don't need any wheels on them when I export them. So I make sure I do it for all the cars. So I'll fast forward this again as well. Uh, just hit L on the keyboard over all the wheels and then delete the vertices. And now it's time to create the Unity project finally. Uh, we're gonna spend a little time here. We have to do export a few more objects in Blender as well, but uh, finally I'm just creating a new in Unity 2019, whatever version. So I do a 3D project and I just uh, name it appropriately. I decided to call it Low Poly Racer and then I just create a, a blank Unity project from that. All right, when you're inside Unity, rename the sample scene. It's nice to not have it named sample scene. So I rename it to game. I have to switch back into Blender because we're gonna export the FBX file. Sorry, just a little bit more Blender first. So I show all the cars at once. I just unhide them by clicking the eye icon and I export all of the cars into one single FBX file. You could have them multiple, but just thought it was simple enough to export them all into one file. They all have to be centered. So I had to reposition the center point. And I do that by just uh, going into the object, selecting all the vertices and sliding it into place. So the center point of the object is in the center of the car. It can be at the base of the car, that's fine, but it has to be center so it pivots around its own center point. That'll be uh, save you a lot of hassle inside of Unity later on. In object mode, select all the cars, and now it's time to export them. So go up to File and do Export and select FBX files. Here are some really important settings. You have to 
Uh, first of all, if you've selected the objects, you need to tick select selected objects. We don't want to export everything that's in this scene. So that's really important if you have multiple scenes and lights and things like that. Another one is apply scalings. Set that to FBX unit scale because that will make one meter in Blender will be one meter in Unity. So it's really handy that the scales are the same. And the last thing we need to do is tick this experimental apply transform again because then the rotation will be correct in unity otherwise the objects they look like they're correct but they're actually flipped 90 degrees around the x-axis unless you do that so because they use different up and down axes navigate to a folder i actually like to save it straight into the assets folder because then unity will automatically import it for you so I create a new folder there that I like to call meshes to keep it tidy. It's a bonus as well. If you want to make changes to a mesh, you can just save over the old FBX file and it'll automatically import it. But be careful if you have animations in there because then you have to redo some of the work for those. Hit the export file and now you've got your cars exported. I'm gonna hide the cars and show the wheel instead because it's time to export the wheel as well. We need that in Unity as well. Make sure the pivot point is in the center of the wheel. You don't wanna have a, a, a wheel that, that rotates around its uh, some other weird axis. So first I moved it manually and for some reason I forgot to, that. Just hit F3, type set origin and then do you can have a really nice way to do what I did before actually with some of the objects. It's origin to center of mass. Then it's time to export the wheel. Same settings as before, really important to keep those. And then I forgot to change the name here, so I overwrote the cars. But that's no panic, I do that all the time. Just have to redo it, but I'll spare you the time. And now the cars are already in Unity because we saved them in the asset folder, so that's really handy. So if you expand the meshes folder now, you'll see that there is a new object called cars. And all the car meshes, as you can see, are in the same FBX file here. I like to go into material and disable import materials and apply because we want to create our own material instead. So I create a new folder, then I call it textures, and then I drag the texture in that we used in Blender into this texture folder. And after that, I create a new folder again, and I name it materials. I like to keep it tidy like that. And then I create a new material there, and I call it common because most objects actually will be using this one since I often use the same palette. Drag the uh, texture that we brought in before to the albedo slot and notice now that the texture looks really blurry. That's no good. We don't, we can't have it like that. So we need to change a few settings. So click on the texture and then you have to change this compression you set to none, otherwise it'll be wrong colors. And also the filter mode you have to change to point, otherwise <laughs> the colors will be very wrong. And then you have to apply the changes as well. Now when you look, uh, the texture looks a lot better, just like we used to it. And then I reduce the smoothness slider, so I like to keep the reflections a little bit lower. And now we're going to drag the cars object into the hierarchy. And then I expand it and select all the cars. And then I drag the common material onto the element zero of the materials. And that'll give all the cars the proper colors. And then I do unpack prefabs completely, if you right click on it, and then I drag all the objects into the root scene and I delete the original cars folder. Now we're uh, all set actually for episode number three. This is gonna be the end of this one. A lot of uh, Blender stuff and housekeeping and doing the exports and things like that. But don't worry, next week we will be doing a lot of stuff in Unity. We're gonna actually get these car, we're gonna get the wheels mounted, we're gonna get the wheel colliders attached, we're gonna have them drive, spin the wheels, we're gonna have them steer. Check out these clips guys. We filmed these in 2005 on a lake not too far away from here. We 
We bought a bunch of old Volvos, uh, Volvo 240 my friend had, I had a Volvo 360. We bought some old rally tires with spikes about that long, got them mounted, drove over to the lake and we paid a guy there who plowed the track on the lake with a, with a little plow just like that. Didn't have any protective gear or anything like that, that was just stupid. <laughs> but the, the water started to leak up in some of the corners and all we did was like uh, we paid the guy a little few more extra Swedish kroner to plow a new track for us so we didn't have to, <laughs> to get the cars wet, it was just stupid. All right, enough about that. Uh, it was a fun time anyway. Hope you liked this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and press a like if you do as well. That'd be nice. Help me out a little bit with some extra visitors. And let's trick that YouTube algorithm and make it blow up again, like just like the last one. I don't know what happened to that one. Maybe it was the thumbnail or something. Whatever it was, it worked quite good. So I'm excited about that. A lot of excitement here. All right, there's the train as well. Nice one. <laughs>